Hi, I'm Dr. Heidi Smith. I am one of the co-chairs of the Pediatric PAD Task Force and authors of the 2022 Society of Critical Care Medicine Clinical Practice Guidelines on the Prevention and Management of Pain, Agitation, Neuromuscular Blockade, and Delirium in Critically Ill Pediatric Patients with Consideration of the ICU Environment and Early Mobility, otherwise known as PEDS Pandem. How do the PEDS Pandem Guidelines relate to the ICU Liberation Campaign? Well, the ICU Liberation Campaign has been a foundation for the use of the A to F bundle to improve outcomes in the care of critically ill patients and liberate them both from mechanical ventilation and the ICU. One of the goals behind the creation of the PEDS Pandem Guidelines was to highlight the pediatric specific literature that advocates for the implementation of bundle elements for critically ill infants and children. Though the guidelines were not organized in a fashion to address every bundle element, the questions that were answered in the guidelines address many aspects of the A to F bundle. Specifically, PEDS Pandem addresses the A and C bundle elements. This is the assessment, prevention, and management of pain and choice of analgesia and sedation by recommending use of valid assessment tools for both pain and sedation that also address pediatric specific obstacles such as age and language development. Other recommendations in PEDS Pandem include the use of both opioid and adjuncts such as non-steroidals for pain management and consideration of non-pharmaceutical interventions for pain such as music therapy. The guidelines begin to explore the use of goal-directed or targeted sedation that empowers our bedside nurses to maintain sedation goals and potentially decrease unnecessary sedative or opioid exposure. And finally, specific recommendations for sedatives such as dexmedetomidine in key populations to again augment the liberation of patients from mechanical ventilation and the ICU. PEDS Pandem also addresses the D element by highlighting the importance and necessity of monitoring for delirium daily on all patients in the pediatric ICU and that there are valid and reliable tools, both interactive and observational for bedside monitoring. The supplemental content will provide even greater detail on those patient populations that may be at greatest risk for the development of delirium and what leads to poorer outcomes, as this remains a new area for many pediatric caregivers. PEDS Pandem strongly recommends for minimizing sedative exposure when able and consider non-pharmacologic strategies such as good sleep hygiene and also family involvement. The guidelines do not support the routine use of haloperidol or atypical antipsychotics for treatment of delirium, though they may have a role in the management of severe manifestations seen in both hypoactive and hyperactive delirium. Finally, the guidelines also touch on both early mobility and family engagement and empowerment. The evolution of care using early mobility continues in the pediatric realm with excellent programs such as Pick You Up, among others that have safely and effectively mobilized critically ill children. PEDS Pandem highlights the safety and feasibility of early mobility in this population and the development of early mobility protocols to lead to further study of this intervention and impact on outcomes. And last but certainly not least is the family. Despite our long history of family involvement in pediatrics, we have not done this area justice by publishing all of our experiences. But Pete's uh, Pandem does highlight that parental presence during less invasive procedures and higher involvement in the PICU may lead to less sedation or analgesia needs, along with higher levels of satisfaction among families. The PEDS Pandem authors look forward to sharing the first pediatric PAD guidelines and encourage ongoing collaboration and support for future studies in pediatric critical care.